Thaddeus Cross, age 42, uh, was arrested um, or taken into custody about an hour ago. Uh, he's being charged with unlawful restraint and reckless endangerment. Um, this all stems from an incident that started early this morning. Um, he had threatened uh, to essentially suicide, cut himself. Someone went, a friend, a neighbor actually went to see if they could help. He pulled her into the apartment, initially would not let her go while waving a gun around. At some point, his cell phone rings or phone rings. That distracts her enough that he's, she's able to get out, at which point um, we started calling him. Uninjured? Her, uninjured, um, other than just scared, uninjured. Right. Uh, so he initially, uh, there, was some, behind you, yeah. there were some other people that went to the apartment, friends of his or acquaintances of his, trying to get him to calm down, knowing that really just needs some, some help. Uh, he, even with their help, would not leave the apartment. Finally, we were able to get them to leave the apartment. He was, you know, we're not calling them hostages. We don't feel that he ever intended to keep them from leaving, but we wanted them and to make sure that they were safe. So they were out. We were able to evacuate all, all the units down there. We spent uh, pretty much the entire day from about 10 o'clock this morning to right up to the to about 6.30 when he stopped taking the calls with hostage negotiators from the state police. Um, we felt that initially that we could talk him into coming out and uh, that failed to be the case. Uh, 6.30 that was? Yeah, so after almost two hours of no contact with him, um, I, I don't know, after two hours, no a certain contact with him, he wouldn't answer the phones anymore, wouldn't take our calls, um, no reach out to friends at that point. Uh, it was decided to use um, forcible entry. Uh, tear gas was deployed into his house. Um, after the second round of tear gas was deployed, he came out and surrendered. Uh, was taken into custody without injury to him or any of the officers. Or any other parties involved? No other parties no in the house. No, uh, the, ha the apartment was searched afterwards. There was no one else in there. So, uh, bottom line is, uh, after a very long day, everyone is safe, including him. It, it was a, there was a lot of people involved. Um, you know, the, the PD, um, you know, the state police, regular troopers, um, the uh, the tactical support unit was here. Hostage negotiator, hostage negotiators from around the state um, were involved. Uh, How many personnel would you say total were involved? Law enforcement alone, about 33. Wow. That includes all the support personnel uh, and the TSU unit on scene. Right. How many people would you say were evacuated? That I don't know. Uh, I know right now that the building can't be occupied. The fire department's trying to get the, the tear gas out, but they won't be able to get back until tomorrow. The, the residents of that building? Correct. And the landlord has made arrangements for them to have other places to stay tonight. And were any other uh, butters or other neighbors evacuated? No, there was... Uh, just that building? Just that one building. Right. Yep. Um, I believe it was a total of five apartments need to be evacuated. Right. So, so that's where we are. Massachusetts State Police? Massachusetts State Police, Northfield, PD. Um, I believe Burniston was also involved in closing off the southern end of 142. Uh, Did, Rescue Inc., Burniston Fire Department was also on scene and along with the Northfield Fire Department. How long would you say the road was closed for? About six and a half hours. You said some of his friends came to intervene, and then afterwards they also exited safely? Correct. I, and yeah. they worked with us to try to make and maintain contact with them, and actually were very helpful. Everybody worked together yep. to a peaceful resolution. Correct. I mean, you hate to have to use force, but in this case, we, you know, we waited. We did everything we could do with, with the hostage negotiations. And basically, it just came down that, you know, after an hour and a half, two hours of no contact with him, we couldn't run the risk that if he had firearms in, right. that someone came to the apartment they thought was law enforcement, <coughs> someone else, and he started shooting. So, uh, TSU did a phenomenal job. So, it, it is correct to say he was armed, or? or, or there were firearms in the house. Okay. And at some point, he had, he had brandished um, a weapon. So. Now, that was, was that where that the neighbor was there? Yeah. yeah. And reiterate, what happened, he actually pointed the gun at her or held the gun to he, her head or something? No, he waved it around. Never pointed, as far as we can tell, uh, her statements and interviews never pointed directly at her.
You so, were talking about the time frame. Uh, so the landlord we, started. Yeah, the landlord started making notifications to to get people out of there before the police were even involved. We were notifications have been made to us, but before we could get to the scene. Okay. The landlord. And you said it actually started very early this morning, as far as he reached it, out to. The original text that he sent were somewhere around 2.30 in the morning. And that was to family? I, I just know he sent texts. Okay. Their relationship to him, I don't know. But the neighbor's the first to make contact with him. He waves the gun around and she gets out. As far as I know, yes. Okay. I don't know if there was anybody in between that had contact with him in person or otherwise. Mm -hmm. So. Was she stuck in there for a while? Did you get the impression? Because Not. you said that she got, he got distracted. Right? He got distracted. I don't think it was for a long period of time. Right. So, or you said it was family and friends, right? You never referred to them as hostages because Correct. it's not clear that... Correct. T yeah. TSU. Tactical support unit. Thank you. Is that that's from our state, that's state it, police? Yeah, it's from our state police's version of SWAT. Yep, they're essentially road troopers have extra gear and training that come in from all over the state. Literally, we've had people come in from like St. Albans. The important thing I want to stress here is everybody worked very well as a team and no one got hurt. Exactly. Even, even Mr. Cross, who was taken into custody, was taken into custody without any significant injuries. Um, or any injuries that we can determine were caused by the arrest. Any right. injuries there have, or he caused himself prior to us even even being involved. Yeah. Unlawful restraint, reckless and endangerment, is yeah. that right? 